so excited to, to play for the club, to play at Trent Bridge, um, and to have that taken away from you was was, was tough. I'm not just saying this, I've just made my sons uh, poached eggs on toast, and the poached eggs were rock hard, and I burnt the toast. So there's no home baking for me. To see the six foot two hairy Wookie in a in a in a, in a silky dress was um, was quite quite a moment. I don't think anyone, um, well, anyone's ever been through anything like this really, to be sort of restricted to your house and all that kind of stuff. I feel for everyone out there, but obviously um, I also feel for all my peers, cricketers, you know, football players, everyone, you know, rugby, everyone in sport is, you know, um, taking the hit as well. I mean, Obviously, we get very well looked after with our unions. The PCA in particular are brilliant with the cricketers, but emotionally, it's um, it's pretty challenging. You know, um, we've worked so hard this winter to be ready for for the season. You know, I, I can remember the the day that hit me. You know, pretty hard, providing obviously I was playing well enough to be in the first sort of starting eleven. You know, the the day that I you know arguably should have been making my knots debut was like. Well, quite quite depressing, really. Um, so excited to, to play for the club, to play at Trent Bridge, um, and to have that taken away from you was was, was tough. And I'm sure, like most people, most people like there are feeling the same, and 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 everyone else with their own jobs as well are feeling um, are feeling the pinch a little bit. Yeah, and I suppose it, it'll have been slightly different for you because at that time, in having just made the move to Notts and and started, I suppose, to look at basing yourself up there for a substantial part of time and now back down south in this yeah it was crazy i mean obviously we, we i think the last day i was in nottingham we were on a team bonding exercise um where we went out to some lake and did some raft building and various things we had a great day together um i think we had a night away somewhere it was um it was outstanding we'd obviously just sung um soul's song that he'd made for the club and you know we had a cracking night um i i danced the last dance from dirty dancing with kevin shine the bowling coach which i'm sure will stick in most most of the players memories um but yeah we um the last day i was up there i can remember walking through west bridgeford um turn left out the ground i was just about to go to the estate agents to sign my tenancy agreement for my apartment um that I'm staying in um, and obviously I just thought to myself you know something something's going on here so I'm gonna have to make a few phone calls and I ended up deciding not to sign the lease and I just phoned them and said look I'm not really sure what's going to go on and obviously you know two three months down the line I'm still not in the, the flat that I paid a deposit on so um, it's very very strange like it's unprecedented really but like I said you have to I mean my mentality is to make the best of a bad situation so I've dedicated myself for the last seven weeks to my training trained I reckon as, as as well as I have trained at any stage of my life I'm in the best condition of my my life so I know that when uh, the opportunity does come to uh, to put the shirt on for the first time I will be ready to go. I was gonna I was gonna mention later actually about you and Kevin Shine because Sol mentioned that when we were talking about him performing on that night as well and, and Kevin Shine in a dress, is that is that right? Is that but no, it's not right. It's is that not right? not right? It's probably the most wrong thing I've ever seen. But that's what it's that's correct. <laughs> it's correct that it did happen. But it definitely wasn't right. Um, no, it was amazing, really. I mean, it, if any, you know, for anyone that watches is familiar with the final dance, um, I snuck. We we um, we kind of um, snuck Kevin into the room um, towards the back, so no one could see him. Um, dressed up in his um, his lingerie slash dress, and um, I walked from front to the back of the room and said this fa that famous line: "Nobody leaves baby in the corner." And then all the lads looked round to see me walking down the aisle with shiny in a in a dress, and to see the six foot two hairy Wookie in a in a in a in a, in a silky dress was um, was quite quite a moment. Yeah, but what sort of reaction did that get in the room? Oh, the boys were loving it. I mean, I think there were there half the room obviously got the line and probably have seen the film. 
But obviously you forget. I mean, this is one of the crazy things about becoming a senior player in a team. But I bet you half the squad that I'm now playing with haven't seen Rocky, Rambo, Top Gun, Dirty Dancing, you know, all the films that were so famous throughout the 80s and early 90s that, you know, you just assume everyone would get those jokes. So I think some of the guys were looking around laughing because they knew what nobody leaves baby in the corner means. Whereas I think half the room were just in complete shock at seeing Shiny in a dress. <laughs> it's probably a difficult image to shake off. <laughs> Yeah, it's, well, that, that is a difficult image to shake off. The final lift um, is more challenging for me to shake off with what was facing me while I had shiny up above my head. To be honest, well, put it this way, I'd rather mistletoe than what was hanging on the forehead. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably a good job we've all got a little bit of time to recover before we have to actually get any competitive sport out there after that, I think. But um, but you, you mentioned as well, yeah, your your sort of fitness, how you're doing. I mean, um, barely a day goes by without me seeing you racking some pretty impressive stats up on the what bike on, on your Instagram. You, you're sort of keeping that going as much as you can. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I, I think within the way you, like if you're into your fitness and training stuff like I am, I mean, you kind of know when you're in good condition, but it's, it's sometimes nice to have them reaffirmed with, the stats, as you say, um, and whether it be rowing, running, or on the bike, the weights I'm lifting, etc. The the amount of time I'm able to train for is just going through the roof. Uh, it, it, like I said, it's I've had seven weeks where I can just purely dedicate myself to to the the physical side of of sport, which is great. So I'm I'm in you know, like I said, the best shape of my life, really. Um, and also, I've had the opportunity to to keep my bowling ticking over while I've been here. The one thing I haven't really been able to do is, like, competitively bat. But, um, but like I said, I mean, I'm sure we'll get a decent period before we eventually do play a game where um, the coaches will have us in the nets and we can get back up to speed. So... Like I said, the best thing you can do out of a bad situation is just prepare yourself for for that moment when um, when we get given the green light. And uh, and seeing you, your sons getting involved a little bit as well when you've been doing a bit of training, a bit of NFL as well. Yeah, well, like I said, we're we're a bit of a multi sports family. Um, uh, the, the boys obviously love their cricket. They're in the junior teams, um, obviously locally and and with Somerset. Um, my young, my youngest son is 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 signed to Southampton Football Club, which is great. But we like to play all sports. Um, my eldest son is really into NFL, um, basketball. That's one of my jobs. Last week, actually, I put a basketball um, hoop up in the back garden. So we've been out there. Um, yeah, I think you have this mental idea that you can shoot a basketball like Michael Jordan, but the reality is very different at the moment. But we'll we'll get there. But the boys love, they love competing against each other as most brothers do. So um, I've been, I've been the quarterback. You know, is it Tom Brady? That's, that's, you know, that's who I'm mimicking. So I'm, I'm launching these touchdown passes across the uh, cricket club outfield and the boys are, are having a good chase for it. So yeah, it's been good. The arm's improving. Good, good. Practice make perfect, after all. Uh, has, has sport always been an avenue you've been keen to see them go down with them, being at Somerset, Southampton and all that? Yeah, I mean, well, like I said, as a, as a sportsman myself and a, and a dad, I, I think even with, you know, my, my daughter as well, you know, she, when she was young, she was, she went through all the ballet grades and all that kind of stuff. She never really got into sports as such, but she was a, she was a really cracking dancer. Um, but the boys, I think you're always mindful not to be like the pushy dad um, because you obviously see so much of it, you know, those dads shouting from the sideline. You never really want to be that person, but sometimes it's impossible. I've been that bloke, to be fair. Tackle him, what are you doing? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you, you know, offering words of advice to the boys? But um, I always sort of, from a very early age, just made sure that I could, buy a piece of equipment from every sport, tennis rackets, hockey, everything you could imagine, threw it into the backyard and whatever they picked up and played with, great. And you know, I'm a big believer in sort of being you know, into multi-sports, multi-teams. I also believe like a massive believer in not having youngsters bored because it is so dangerous. Like 
in terms of what they can get up to and the mischief and stuff like that. Whereas I really think that if there's a bit of a sporting background there, they've always got something to do and all that sort of stuff. But the hardest challenge being a dad of sports boys this day and age is um, Fortnite and all those games that they play. I mean, trying to keep them off of those games is hard work. They, they, have, a, they have a fair few hours a day where they do play it. Um, but I'm always encouraging them to get outside. Have you doubled yourself in Fortnite? No. No? Not tempted? I just haven't got, I just haven't got time for it, really. And, and I think the games that I used to love playing, Street Fighter 2, FIFA, when you used to only have three buttons on the Mega Drive, it was so simple. Like it, was, it was pass and shoot, scoring glamour goals, a bit of Mortal Kombat. Whereas now it's so complicated. I look, I watch the, some of the lads play, like my boys play FIFA now. And you have to control the bloke that isn't even on the ball. I mean, <laughs> just, I mean, the, the best thing that I've done so far in the last 10 years is my, my son has a, a Nintendo Switch. And um, I downloaded all the old games from my era and I just started playing Tetris. And that was, that's, that's about as far as my gaming goes, Tetris. <laughs> Did you see Tom Moore's cricket um, campaign, shall we say, in the in the quarantine cup? I did see some of the cricket action. Yeah, I mean, um, the one thing I noticed about Moore's avatar is that he had a nice beard on him, and the hair was done. <laughs> so obviously, that was you know, he's obviously been in the designing of the game. He's been involved, I can tell. But now, um, yeah, like the gaming stuff kind of um, passes me by a little bit, to be honest. What about what about homeschooling? Is that something you've had to contend with as well recently? Well, my my youngest child is twelve, and he's already far far past my education standard. So I leave that up to mum. That's that's that is not dad's department at all. <laughs> um, now something else I've seen that you've been busy with at the minute is uh, is the clubhouse stuff. The um, the interviews you've been doing. Um, I presume you'd plan to do that slightly different to these from home kind of setups that we're all in at the minute? Yeah, we had, um, I mean, I'm, I'm involved with a, a media company uh, based in Bristol. Um, we had an idea to launch the Clubhouse. They've got many different media platforms. I, I believe they've got the contracts to do a lot of the um, media for Bath Rugby, Bristol City, Bristol Rugby. Um, so I'm hoping to, to, to go into that later on in, in life. But we wanted to get something up and running and, and we had this concept of the clubhouse where it was instead of the sort of journalist to sportsman type of interview that you do from time to time, we wanted it to be sort of sportsman, sportsman, really relaxed, the, the, the sort of banter side of things that I think people enjoy. And we had an idea to, you know, um, for instance, one of our first ones was actually going to be with ex-teammate, ex-England bowler Andy Caddick and we were going to, he's really been in, for years been into to shooting, like clay pigeon shooting and all that kind of stuff so we'd, we'd booked to go down on a shoot with him and basically the concept would be that we would just be filmed having a, a day out, I would take on a hobby of whoever the contributor is, whether it be shooting, fishing, wine tasting, golf, whatever it might be and then we just, you know, let the conversation and go where it goes and obviously talk about career highlights and stuff like that along the way but hopefully just have a little bit of fun with it so that was the plan um, obviously we're restricted to this type of thing at the moment which is, which is great but like I said I mean um, once you've been through the Only Fools and Horses box set and a few of these type of interviews you're kind of yearning for a bit of new television aren't you I suppose? Yeah I mean what, what have you been watching? Well, I've gone through all the series that I wanted to watch. Um, yeah. Homeland in particular. Homeland yeah. was, was one that I was really keen on. Um, I think the best thing I've seen on television, if you're, if you're into sport, I don't think you even have to like basketball. The Last Dance um, series on Netflix about the sort of the 90s Chicago Bulls team, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, etc. The coach, Phil Jackson. I mean, that... It's a really raw, um, you know, very open, honest uh, evaluation of, obviously, they were probably, they were at the time the best sports team in the world. They were absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. And 
there's so many different dynamics. It's re- like I said, it's a really open and honest documentary. And Monday morning, I'm bouncing out of bed. I can't wait to, to watch that. So if you haven't seen The Last Dance, get on it. Does that work? Even if you don't know your basketball, I think the only basketball film I've watched was Space Jam, which doesn't really count. So it still like, makes sense. Well, Space Jam does actually feature in this. Um, I think in, in the off-season between, I think, 90, ooh, 95, 96, I think they filmed Space Jam and at the Warner Brothers studio, they made him his, his, a basketball court and they, they invited every day different NBA players to come and play with MJ. And obviously, you know, they, they all turned up to, to play with and against him. And I think it was... It was after his season playing baseball. It's, it's fascinating. I mean, obviously, you've got Michael Jordan, you know, Messi, Ronaldo, Tiger Woods. You know, they are the ultimate sports people. And if you want to understand what makes these people tick, it's, it's such a good series because what makes it unique is not all the glossy stuff. There's some stuff that probably doesn't paint Michael Jordan in a great light as well. But when you package it all together you make a superstar and it's it's been amazing to watch. I've had four lockdown haircuts and they get progressively more dramatic, so yes. It's very dramatic compared to the long hair you arrived at Trent Bridge. Yeah, definitely. I had to go. <laughs> Um, I have with my my son, Southampton Football Club did one for all of their um, academy players, so yes, I have. Home baking, no, I'm, well, I, I, I'm not just saying this, I've just made my son's uh, poached eggs on toast and the poached eggs were rock hard and I burnt the toast, so there's no home baking from me. I haven't painted a fence, but I have put up a basketball hoop. I think I've just got better at my hobbies that I used to have. That's all I've done. I've been more dedicated to them. Sensible way to go, I think. Well, um, well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, yeah, take care, and hopefully we can all uh, we'll get back to Trembridge sometime soon. My pleasure. I cannot wait to pull in to the ground and uh, get my kit out of the car. I'm praying for some uh, some sun and some cricket very soon. <laughs>